CATV is proudly presented by Toyota. Uh, Mike, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, well battered today yourself, but how do you sort of sum up the, uh, the mood? Probably one of frustration, really, as you finish this day. Yeah, um, yeah. We, I think, ideally, we'd have liked to have lost a few less wickets. Um, but having said that, I mean, I think Australia credit to them. They bowled very well. Um, were very patient through the day, um, and it was a good scrap, I think, through the day. Um, but um, you know, we're still still in the hunt. I think um, you know we're two hundred behind. So obviously, you know, we have to get through the new ball tomorrow, and then hopefully get up near to the Australians somewhere later on in the day. The Australian bowlers were patient, weren't they? But just had that knack of taking wickets at crucial times. Yeah, um, and that's what I guess that's what pressure does. You know, they, they shut down the scoring at, at various times and obviously made it difficult to score. So, I mean, in, when you, we know when that happens, you know, wickets are likely to come through maybe sometimes good luck, bad luck or, you know, um, good, good fielding. Uh, Kevin Peterson's dismissal will no doubt get talked about quite a bit after today, the way that he got out. What, what's, your, what's your view, the team view on that? Because obviously England could have done with him just uh, hanging on in there, really. Um, yeah, I mean, I think hanging on in there is, a diff, you know, it's a dangerous terminology sometimes when you bat because, I mean, you know, you're out there to score runs. And as we know, Kevin is a positive player. Um, that's what's made him successful over a long career. Um, you know, he he, play, he does things that not many of us can. So, um, and it's a shot that I think many of us have seen him play time and time again and hit it out of the ground. So, um, you know, it's obviously disappointing, but for him and us, but, um, you know, we want people to play how, how they play naturally. And I'd, I wouldn't want to see Kevin put that shot in the locker. How near do you think, as a team, you need to get to 385? Or I don't know. Do you still think you can possibly get past it? I mean, to, to really stay competitive in this Test match, how near do you think you have to get to Australia's total? Um, well, at, at the moment, I mean, that's getting getting near to 380 for us is, you know, is obviously uh, you know the, the long term goal. I mean, I think what we what we're trying to do now is um, break our break our, our run chase down really into into small targets. So I think to, tomorrow really is getting through that first hour, getting up to 200 and then sort of taking it in small, to small targets up until we get to three, 300, 380, whatever the Australians got. Just on, on your innings today, um, was there a point when you were actually starting to enjoy it out there, Michael, or feel that you were, you were on top of this? Because it, it was a real positive partnership while you were going with Alistair, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I got in a limb and said, you know, I've enjoyed every innings I've played in in this in this series so far, because um, you know what a, what a, an arena to be in. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I guess it was one of those um, one of those innings where you know it, it was a good it's a good very good surface, and um, you know I was feeling pretty good as I've done on the tour to date, and um, just put try to put some pressure back on the bowlers really um, not let them settle in um, and it and it for a time there it worked nicely with obviously Alistair at the other end um, unfortunately we weren't able to really build that that big big partnership but um, I guess from what's happened in game in the innings before in the series I mean it's uh, obviously a massive stepping stone in the right direction you said it's a stepping stone I mean there were a couple of good partnerships and players got starts, but of course, no one really went on for the big score. Is that a result of Australia's quality coming through or, or, or poor decision making, kind of shot selection? How, where would you put that balance? Um, I think across the series, um, it's been a combination of both, um, if, if I'm being honest. Um, and I think if we're honest with ourselves, um, the pressures brought about, you know, some some bad decisions at times and, and bad shot selection. Um, having said that, in this innings, I thought we've, you know, we've um, picked and choose when we've we've gone hard at, at certain deliveries, which I think is the right way to go. Um, we've recognised that this surface is slightly different to most other surfaces we're going to play on, um, and you have to know the areas that you're you're going to score in. Um, and similarly, it's about being decisive. In what you don't play at, so um, I think we've, you know, as a result, in out there, you know, we've um, we've done that pretty, well, done that pretty well today. You, but, but ultimately, though, at the end of the day, uh, players have still not gone on and made a really telling contribution, and, and I'm, I'm wondering why, uh, even even on a day like today, when 
the fight and the, the kind of determination has been evident, it's still fallen short. Yeah, well, unfortunately, if I had the answer to that, you know, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd probably, you know, be writing, a, making a lot of money writing books on batting. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, it's it's a difficult one, obviously, to really comment on. Um, as a batting unit, I think all we can really do is do the hard yards in terms of nets and practice and all that kind of stuff, and then, you know, but once we get out to the middle, it's about you know, switch on and try and do, you know. Um, play the best innings you can, and sometimes you go through phases as a batsman where you know you, you get those starts and you get out for some reason you find ways of getting out, whether it be the pressure of bowling or, like you say, it's bad decision making. Um, but I also know the other side of the coin is that it's it's one of those things that you you can't dwell on as a player, and you know, very quickly you have to move on because it's it's all about the next innings, and that's ultimately the one that counts. Michael uh, Joe Root obviously was. It was an interesting decision. How was he when he got back to the dressing room? Was there a bit of a, you know, he looked looked really shattered. Was it air of bewilderment about him at all? Yeah, it was obviously a disappointing dismissal for us um, and a key dismissal for us. Um, and you know, he obviously felt he didn't hit the ball, so he reviewed it. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, what the decision made by the third umpire was um, obviously I'm not fully aware of because I wasn't there. But um, obviously, we're bitterly disappointed by that. Do you feel that that technology is right? Like it's the the new the new Snicko and everything like that. To, it, it, I guess the umpire was a prisoner of the system, wasn't he? He couldn't overturn anything. <laughs> what, what do you make of the new system? Unfortunately, sir, as a newbie to Test cricket, you're probably asking the wrong guy because I've I've not really used the Snicko or um, DRS at the moment, so I'm probably not in a position to comment on that. What was the general feeling in the rooms for the guy from the guys who had been there and been through some controversy and the the series earlier in England, what was the general feeling in the room? Was there a feeling that he had hit it or he hadn't hit it or that the line didn't move enough to be a, net, a bat? Um, well, I mean, we are the opinion he didn't hit it, because hence why we reviewed it. Um, and like I said before, I mean, um, the decision made by the third umpires, um, obviously we don't control that. So, you know, it's one of those things we have to swallow, I'm afraid.